the morning dew. The sun shines bright on a brand new day. Whoa. Whoa. Praying to all of the dead. Ones who got influenced by Aura. What a sight. What a sight. As he should. Oh, this art. Oh, this, this, this art is great. <laughs> Blessing me with this incredible soundtrack too. Ah, his son. Oh ボゴ結界についてしるされた。お前から見れば <laughs> the comedic timing though. Gokuro. <laughs> that dude didn't have to come in like that. <laughs> He's petrified. The <laughs> I wonder how Freeran is going to react to that. He's floating. <laughs> Jesus, those burgers. I mean, we saw Fern eating one, but like, geez. Oh, I'm sorry. They didn't have to drop this. What is this insert song? <laughs> Proper burials. So that the dream remains uncorrupted. Beautiful. Gonna ask why? Just giving advice. There's a certification for that. <laughs> Freeran doesn't have one. Oh, no. <laughs> so frequently. Mrs. Freeran, it's been an entire decade. <laughs> Hmm. Snow? Oh. <laughs> Real history also. <laughs> Stark in the back. Oh no. <laughs> We're getting reminded of that. Wonder if we're gonna be bumping into another character here. Somebody who can save them. Somebody who knows this land. Whoa. <laughs> I ship them. There is a small shack. A place to warm yourself for now. Another party member, perhaps? Oh, it's an elf! Why is it so awkward? <laughs> Fern is the one who closes the door. Okay, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> oh, it's this. Kind of recognize that voice actor? Hmm. 
モンクのクラフトだクラフトモンクシタルク様の体温がオーノースタートステップアウトベッドンゴインテッドライトそれに何に大きいじゃんもぐアイセンスライトネオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオーオー俺もお前のことなんてこれっぽっちも知らん。Really? Poor Fern. Oh my god, this episode is so cozy. I want to get a blanket and just snuggle in. もうすぐ半年になるな。Six months, huh? こいつを。フェルンに渡してやってくれ。Mmm. 女神様への感謝を忘れていない。Yeah. So that was a statue of the goddess that they were looking at. The goddess of creation also kind of looks like an elf. Very interesting. Yeah. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. I'm s She understands that very well. Oh, great shot. It's more convenient if it exists, right? お前が信じないっていうのなら女神様の代わりに俺がお前を褒めてやる。意外ですか？うん。あ、more <laughs> Wow. The same lines as well. Oh, he knows. He knows. Man, he got that foresight. <laughs> oh, okay. He doesn't necessarily have to be his biological、um, children, right? That's cute. Hmm. I really hope that is not the last time that we get to see him. Feels like he would add something more to the dynamic of the group, but either way, fantastic episode. Another fantastic episode of f r e y r u n This feels like the. This is the end of the. I guess this specific adventure within this city when we are dealing with the demons, and then we kind of. It's, it's, it's a nice transitional episode, right? Where we finish. One journey, and then we're beginning our next journey. And I feel like the episode itself, kind of dealing more with the theme of faith and a little bit of the religious aspect, I would say, of the world of Free Run, was a really welcome surprise for me because I wasn't really expecting it. But I am glad that they are focused on it regardless, considering that, yeah, previous party member is a priest, Heiter, of course. And now we're meeting a new character, Kraf, who is a monk. So I, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed. Um, that aspect of, of this episode a lot. The part that kind of took me off guard was, of course, the incredible, the incredible insert song that, that happened like、um, somewhere in the middle of the episode because that insert song was great. It was fantastic. It was beautiful. It was a. It, it, it felt like.、Um, it actually felt like the perfect way to end this. I guess side quest. I'm just gonna call, I'm just gonna call it a side quest. It, it felt like the perfect way to end this side quest of f r e e r u n Fern, and Stark、um, traveling and adventuring in this specific city after dealing with the demons. And of course, like the 
rebuilding of the of the city or i guess the um the aftermath of you know all of the battles that they had beforehand dealing with you know the losses that they have it's an incredible piece i really enjoyed it it's it's definitely ringing in a bit of my emotions and i'm sure once i rewatch this episode multiple times already and listen to the song again and again and again um i'm pretty sure i'm probably gonna feel more emotions than than, than i currently am so that, that, that was such a great moment I, I really do love that part but as i mentioned some of the themes of this episode i really love how we start the episode with that specific theme with free run kind of bowing and praying to the knights that have lost their lives you know being controlled by aura and it is beautiful like the backgrounds and some of the more close-up shots of like the armor pieces the little details within like the shots themselves like this specific part for example like it's it's beautiful to look at like it's it's genuinely like beautiful like you can definitely you, you can even see like the the brush strokes like the hand like the genuine hand painting that was crafted to, to create this specific shot i can't fully tell if this is a digital painting or a traditional one or a mix of the two but either way it it looks beautiful it, it almost kind of make the scenes with the cg knights far it, it made me look back at those scenes and it made me like them less <laughs> um i don't i don't mind the scenes by the way like just just to re-emphasize like i don't think that it's a deal breaker at all i i, I think they're pretty good for what it's worth like better than a lot of other cg knights in in other animes um but it's just like compared to like everything else that this show kind of produces it's definitely like that sore thumb of like yeah it's compared to that to like this quality i mean i get it it's like a cg scene and and something that is like traditionally um painted but but still though it's just a minor nitpick so don't think too much about like my actual thoughts and opinions on that but moving on from that the montage of our heroes just enjoying their life in the city while they prepare themselves for like their next adventure is really sweet heartwarming especially accompanied by that incredibly incredibly beautiful insert song from the giant burger to graf granat just looking at the sword of his son the running gag of stark looking at this dude with the giant axe that kind of freaked him out about like a couple of scenes ago our heroes enjoying the festivities and then ending it with the proper burial of the knights who have fallen it's it's such a beautiful, beautiful montage. And moving on from that, as we embark on our new journey, it feels like we kind of got our next objective, which is Freerin doesn't have a certificate, like like an actual magic certificate. We need to solve that. We need we need to fix that in order to make sure that our the rest of our journey will be you know smooth sailing, you know, because otherwise we might get into trouble of like, hey, are you are you qualified? And I love that this is also a little bit of world building because the, I the the idea and the thought of yeah way back when you don't really need a certificate to use magic but now that it's probably becoming more and more commonplace and obviously you need to regulate that like not everybody needs to have like magic and that they can just fling around and do whatever they want because you know like magic in the hands of bad people will do bad things so duh you need a certificate to to in order to use and wield magic otherwise you're probably gonna get arrested by the police or something i don't know it's just such a funny thing to think about because i'm trying to think of like other stories or fantasy that kind of addresses this i'm sure that i've seen some before but i just can't i, I can't really you know think of one at, at the back of my mind currently because like i'm looking back at like classic fantasy like lord of the rings like it's not like gandalf needs a certificate or anything like no um so this is like a really funny i guess progression to the main story but it's it, it also kind of makes more sense considering like some of the theme of the show like yeah times are changing for you Rin. you're you're falling behind you need to you need to get with the times man you need, you need to get like an actual certificate and the, the the thought of like our next adventure being that free run is going to go to a certain place a city like they kind of um hinted at like a german city name that i'm not going to pronounce because i'm probably going to butcher it but the idea that free yeah that, that free run and the rest of the gang are going to come there and the whole goal is for free run to actually get a certificate so basically we're going to do a 
a school arc, <laughs> essentially. But the just just the thought of like Freeman coming into school or or you know academy or or whatever it is just to get their cert certificate, and Freeman will either showcase her incredibly powerful skills, and people will be like amazed, like whoa, what? Or the fact that there's gonna be rule. There's gonna be new rules, new grounded like stuff, and free run is not going to be able to adapt to it. Like, like it's it's like either of those two, and either way, it's gonna be pretty funny, and I cannot wait to see where they're gonna go with that. But from then, we move on to the second half of the episode, which is where we meet Kraft the monk, and we spend most of our time, six months, just waiting out for the winter season to be over, right? And we just see them just surviving. And I really wish that we get to see more of Kraft. Like, I don't think that this is going to be the last time that we are going to be meeting him. We might see him again in the future. Who knows? Because I feel like having another party member to our main group feels like the most obvious choice. Because before this, Freerun's original party members consist of four people, including Free including Freerun, right? Currently, we're only three. We kind of need one more. And having another elf could could you know change the dynamic a bit make it far more interesting and even currently speaking like just seeing like their dynamic you, you know even the little time that we have with Kraft, he seems like a very interesting character and i just want to know more about him especially the fact that he is an elf now what i am very curious is the goddess herself now we kind of talked a bit about the goddess like i think way back in like the first episode where we are kind of introduced to her at least verbally speaking like there were dialogue and um images of the goddess right that we kind of saw and i kind of briefly talked about her but because we don't have any information at all it was just like oh yeah um the god that they are praising or or um that they are worshipping in this world is referred to as the goddess and then that's pretty much it but here we're kind of getting more of that because we're kind of talking with craft the monk having the religious and the faith um the, the the fateful theme of of the of the show kind of kicking in just for this specific moment and it's fascinating it's, it's definitely fascinating i mean the imagery itself the goddess seemingly an elf because you know the ears and such but then the angel wings and i don't know if the angel wings are just deification of the goddess or if the goddess is just a normal elf like that's that's like the thing right if we're talking if, if we are taking real religion or, or i guess um how certain religions um form certain religions do stern from the fact that we are deifying certain characters or certain figures right who may necessarily just be a human but we kind of deify them like especially um if we're talking about like roman and, and and greek gods especially the romans at least in terms of like the history that i know of like there are certain roman figures roman characters roman emperors that kind of deify themselves and and they became gods and people worship them and such so it's i'm looking at at the goddess and i'm kind of like thinking of is the goddess actually a goddess like an actual deity or if the goddess is simply an elf like like a normal elf but it's just that we kind of deify her we add wings and thus she became the goddess like like i'm very much curious about like the lore behind her like the history of why she is the goddess and why the goddess has the figure of an elf and why everybody is praising her and apparently she's the only god in the world at least um as far as i'm concerned because she is the only one that is being mentioned like even humans are praising her elves are praising her and that's like something that i wasn't really expecting you know like i, I would have thought like you know a, a human would praise a god that resembles a human uh, an elf would praise a god that resembles an elf but no the goddess resembles an elf and everybody praises her it's also just the imagery of the goddess herself that kind of it's 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 igniting something at the back of my brain and and I don't, I, I don't know where i'm gonna go with this but a little bit of it reminds me of free run in terms of like character design i mean white hair flowers on her head that's pretty much it <laughs> but yeah yeah like, like i'm kind of curious like does free run have any relations with the goddess am i reaching too far i don't know but the fact that I am curious about the goddess, the fact that I am, the fact that I want to know more about her, kind of goes to show like how invested I am with the, within the world of Freerun. And you, and I can't say that 
with a lot of other attempts in fa- in, in in fantasy in regards to anime. Like sometimes a fantasy will uh, sounds, I'm sorry. Um sometimes an anime will have a fantasy se- a fantasy setting and it's just a setting and that's pretty much it. Like I don't really care too much about the fantasy setting. I just know that it's a fantasy and we're kind of focusing more on the characters. But Free Run kind of balances both of them and I really enjoying it because I'm really enjoying the character aspect, but I'm also really engaged with the world in which the characters are living. Like, I want to know more. Freerun is doing a really good job of that. This is something that I've been praising Freerun, and this is something that I will probably continue to praise. And speaking of praise, something that I find very interesting about the episode, especially towards the end, is this part where Freerun is talking about wanting to be praised, or at least um, Kraft and... Heiter talking to Freerun about, hey, if you don't want to talk about your faith, at least talk about yourself to so that I can praise you. Because this part kind of, it, it sparks me an idea or a thought about self-love and one's own self-worth. Because Kraft asking Freerun to say, you know, tell me who you are so that I can praise you and Freerun answering, nah, I'm good. Because I already have somebody that prays me, and that somebody, of course, I I, th- I think at this point we can just we can just say that it's um that it's Himmel, like I think that's pretty obvious. It just got me thinking of like, Freeran is this character that has lived over a thousand years. She has done multiple feats. She has done um a lot of. A lot of contribution to the world, I would say, and yet she doesn't strike me as someone who is doing it to seek either attention or appraisal, right? She's just doing it because because she just wants to do it, right? She's not really um she she I don't I don't think she defeated the demon king so that she will be immortalized and and people will praise her. In fact. She doesn't really care that much about it. In fact, when people want to praise her, she kind of, kind of goes like this: like, look, ah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Like, like, I know you, free run. I don't, I don't know who you are. I don't, I don't know who you're talking about. You know, like even like thinking way back when, when um, the old grandma wanted to um, to clean the the statue of Himmel, and then she goes, hmm. If I recall, there was an elf that she traveled along with him. She kind of reminds me of of you, Freerun. And then Freerun doesn't doesn't really acknowledges it. She just goes like, "Hmm, yeah, there is," you know. But but she doesn't really acknowledges it. You know, she she doesn't want people to acknowledge who she is. She doesn't want people to praise her in in, in a way. I just find that fascinating. Cons- also considering because I just talked about like there are tiny bits of the goddess that kind of reminds me of Freerun, and yet here Freerun doesn't want to be praised as if she doesn't want to be deified. She doesn't want to be seen as a god. She doesn't want to be seen as a hero, I would say. Like, like she she is her own self. She is Freerun. Freerun is Freerun. But there is only one person that she allows to praise to be, uh, 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 that that she allows to praise her, and I find that to be very interesting, and I really love that specific trait in her character. I guess I don't know how else to describe it. I just I just find that to be a very interesting point of her character, especially in this moment. And I cannot wait to see more of her in the future. That is pretty much it for my reaction and review of Freedom Episode Eleven. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction and review. If you do, hit the like, subscribe, share the video. You know the drill. Early access and full uncut reactions are all available in Patreon. Links in the description below. And I will see you all next time for our next episode of Free Run. Take care, everybody. Have a nice day. Peace.